What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? We got 70 people in the live chat already. It's not an April Fool's joke, ladies and gentlemen. You can see it. There is Mr. Rob Bidget Jr. Here I am. We're live. Rob, how are you, man? Overcome and overpower. Which one? Yeah, I like that little tagline. I, I think I like that. It's it's got a lot of uh truth and implication behind it, I think. So yeah, I'm doing good. It's morning time for me here, so I'm still on coffee time, but you never know when one could switch it up because I still got Ireland on my mind. On my mind. <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, th th this is, this is a bit of a buzz. I think the arm wrestling world was a bit shocked to see that we were going to even do this. A lot, a lot of people thought it was April Fools. A lot of people thought surely these two personalities can't can't be in the same space together. But here we are. I've I've gone for the to make my head look as big as possible angle. Clearly, um, yeah, I your think arms you cut are out half of my my <laughs> games. I think I think you're trying to, uh, you're trying to uh, this is your overcome side of the show. Where you're trying yeah. to make a, you're trying to make a, <laughs> out all my assets. What, my, my wrist definitely fills more of the screen. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ladies and gents, welcome. Uh, we are live, as you can see. Uh, let's uh, cut the music. We can cut the music there. We don't need music anymore. Anyway, welcome, 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 welcome. Let me get the chat back up. Good to see everybody in the chat, whether you are watching live on my YouTube channel, Rob's YouTube channel, or Facebook, or anywhere else. Welcome. This is uh, this is going to be this is going to be something. We're going to actually have a crack at uh, getting on here on, on the regular. Uh, we'll try to do it weekly. And uh, talking about whatever's going down in the arm wrestling world, obviously, we don't need to introduce either. either, either oh, I don't want to big note myself and say I don't need to introduce myself, but I don't need to introduce the man next to me. Uh, you guys know him well and truly. Uh, the man from Massachusetts with uh, plenty to say. I'll just say like that. And, and I think that it's a very interesting combo. I look forward to it because, Rob, let's admit, we have a different way of thinking in this sport, don't we? Yeah, my way of thinking is right, and you're very multiple. Very multiple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm very multiple. Yeah, well, well, I, well, I am always. I'm starting to get to the point in life where I'm starting to try to learn and try to think about uh, being a little less abrasive. So maybe I am. Maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> Is now hey, what's this echo? People are talking about echo. Is it on my end or is it, is it, okay. is it from is it from your headphones or what? Well, let me have a look. Let me have a look. I apologize, guys. Let's see what I can do. It's all uh, right. This is pilot yeah. program. They anyone who's been on my podcast knows that it's a fucking shit show for at least three shows, and then we don't do another one. <laughs> yeah, guys, let us know if it is still echoing. Uh, is that the case? I'm going to end that in that poll, by the way, 40% of people didn't think this was actually going to happen. Um, so let us know in the comments section if the echo is there. Rob's mic's too Rob, low. I, can I, I don't even know how to turn my fucking microphone up, right. guys. I can turn you up. I can turn you up. Yeah. you. This is what you are. Like I said at the beginning of this, you're basically the Artem and I'm the Travis. This is like the new age. I'm just going to bring whatever sauciness I bring and you take care of all the uh, technical shit. Yeah. All right. So no echo. All good now. Looks like I think it was just because I had that music playing. As soon as I killed the music, I think we came good. But um, yeah. anyway, we got a, we got 130 in here, guys. Welcome. Uh, as you can see, your your questions are on the live screen as well. So keep them flowing. It's going in a different order. It's going from it's coming down from the top, which is funky. It takes me a while to get used to it. But we'll check your comments. Obviously, if you send super chats, we'll get onto them as well. But um, man, there's so much going on right now. Rob, we can't, we can't, we can't go past what just happened in Ireland. We have to start there. Arm gods, Valhalla three. We both pull. We both competed. We both witnessed some pretty damn epic matches. Some some bloody crazy stuff as well. Uh, kick it off, man. Where where what, what was your impression, Valhalla three? And it lived up to all the hype for me because first of all, Ireland was a bucket list place to go for me my whole life. So the opportunity to go arm wrestle there gave me all the reason to get on the horse, train, and book that match. Um, Ireland was gorgeous. It was everything uh, I could have hoped for and more as far as the towns we visited and the experience I got from it, as well as the hosting from uh, Paul and Marcus. I mean, 10 out of 10 production for me, and the people were my kind of people. What's that mean? A little bit lewd, crude, socially unacceptable. They're not afraid to crack a Bloody Mary in the morning and share their honest thoughts, break some balls. And really for me, I, you know, submerged myself in that lifestyle. Maybe a little too much, but 
I'm still did scared, it, you so. didn't you have like something like 25 drinks within 36 hours of pulling or something like that is that the I number I think that might be an accurate to low side <laughs> estimation <laughs> I, I honestly, I, 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 I cannot do that. I cannot. I, I, I'm one and a half beers and I've got a headache. I don't know. How you now, know. the truth of the matter is, you know, that was part of Paul's approach was Rob's not going to be able to control himself. His fucking central nervous will be down. His electrolytes will be down. And I was like, oh, you're going to put that on blast. I'm going to show you. You know what I showed him? That he was 110% right. Uh, I was, I was definitely, uh, probably not on my game as much as I should be if I was uh, fully athletically minded, but I couldn't look past my experience in Ireland and the guys I was with, as well as my own demons. I got to let them loose sometimes. Mm -hmm. It was it was a ridiculously nice part of the world. I will say that. It was yeah. walking around there, you felt like... Yeah, well, I, I actually... I don't know. You felt like there's some history there. You felt like some people have fought here and some people have died here and like there were castles and all sorts of stuff. I... It was, it was crazy, but the event itself for me was um, the most impressive thing was just the sheer volume of the cards with the quality of the arm wrestling. It was, uh, I saw some of the best matches I've ever seen in my life. Uh, was it Connor Sale and Matt Smith? Hook Death War, like, like you've never seen before. Um, absolutely amazing stuff from Tom Holland. Uh, we saw, as you said, elite Europeans. Uh, Plaman was there, D Dimitrov. Um, I mean, I mean, it was seventeen matches, something like that. It was nuts. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I would venture to say that for the cards I've seen in in as long as I've been in the game, overall, that was as entertaining as any promotion we've seen. I mean, you can always stack up certain matches against certain matches, but it was a high quality, high level. We're not. It wasn't some subcategory ugly you know stepchild type of promotion to like king of the table or east versus west i think the arm wrestling and the quality was as good as good beautiful hey we've got our first super chat in it's from sir gino he's 10 great british pounds he might he must have been there i reckon judging by the currency as he says absolutely amazing sorry absolutely buzzing to have this weekly shows that real men can respect regardless of agreeing or not some great conversations ahead Tiva, uh, team RVJ, hashtag Bowen is okay too. He's obviously watching on your <laughs> channel. <laughs> that was a super chat to you, Rob, not a super chat to me for sure. But hey, oh, good. good Thank See, you, man. Sometimes when you're an asshole, you may turn off, you know, 999 people, but the one subject that stays is going to at least be loyal. You know what I mean? You're going to get somebody that appreciates that shit. You know, you know, you know like, uh, you, how long have you been out wrestling there, Rob? How many years? Uh, this summer will be 20. 20. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm at eleven, uh, pretty much spot on at eleven, and 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 like you do have to humble yourself, and I and I when I reflect on on my journey, you I've had to really evolve my willingness to uh, to just listen to other people that have that have done it, and it turns out a lot of them were right, a lot of them were right, but. It's not that I felt like I was I was wrong. I was just like ah, doing my own thing for a long time. But I, I got to admit, I actually really have really enjoyed uh, getting to hang out with you over breakfast and all that sort of stuff, despite all of the, <laughs> the previous tension. So, well, yeah, you were just like uh, uh, you had a lot of <laughs> learning curves to do, and I think that every time you stumbled onto a new learning curve. You thought that anyone who wasn't on your line of thinking was wrong and ignorant. And this is what happens through the sport. And, uh, well, let's just say I've been enlightened for a long time now. And it's hard for me to watch somebody in your journey. Your journey. Yeah, there we go. Well, some people are saying the echo's back. Hey, I apologize if it is. We'll, uh, I haven't changed anything, so we should be good. But it, people are saying echo. But anyway, let us know if it is fixed. Is it, is it like hey, reading off of my phone off the wall or some shit? So I gotta get like noise yeah. baffles back here. Back here. Yeah. Hey, just think you guys get to hear me twice as much. So my word count is doubled. <laughs> we'll get it sorted out next week. Next week. Just hey, we think, if we were having a conversation over a fire in a cave, would it make my points any less valid? Valid. Hey, we got a super sticker. Now, now one thing about this application, when someone sends a super sticker, we get a we get a uh, a uh, text-based description of the sticker. So 
Thank you, Ricky Walker, for sending us a pair character lifting some weights saying keep it up. That's a, we appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Nice. Nice. Yeah, good stuff. Hey, we do have one more and then uh we'll uh get into some subjects. Hey, not my monkeys, not my circus, two British great British prowns. I just want to wish both you gents the best. Hail. There we go. Thank you very much, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, so Rob, uh, one of the one of the one of the contentious points that I don't know, like this this podcast, I feel like we're gonna have some real conversations and I feel like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna sometimes look, sometimes we put on a show. We'll talk about the big show that was on at Valhalla later on. But sometimes we as athletes put on a uh, a persona. Sometimes we we talk real. I know you are a big fan of talking real, but I have witnessed you putting on a little bit of a show at times, particularly when it comes to your weight. Are you going to become clean and tell us what your weight really is or what? Yeah, I don't mind that. It's just my own. Uh, I'm not I'm not above uh, insecurity because I, I'd like to bring it down. But yeah, um, probably about 105 kilo right now. Right now. So uh, That's exactly. a little over 230. 230. I agree. That, that that that's the truth. You 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 and I you and I the last couple of times we've been in the same room and stepped on a set of scales. I think we've been within a pound of each other each time. Yeah. So my goal will be to you know keep keep the mass and uh, uh, not cut too fast. But probably by the time I pull with Jerome, maybe be like a just a more fit same mass like 100. I think that's a nice slow slow from doing cardio and watching what i eat and what i'm not gonna go crazy i'm going on a cruise cruise but like 100 oh, kilos that's, that's probably disaster, my man. Brain. going on a cruise free unlimited food and, and alcohol you've got no chance of keeping well it no off. i don't have a chance but that's one week out of like nine weeks so i'm hoping that the other yeah. eight might balance out if i up the cardio i'm gonna try to spend a portion of the day on the cruise doing shit like playing sports with my kids in the morning and and maybe burn some calories. I don't know. You're right. I'm fucking doomed. I'm going to be 120 kilos by the time I get off the, the <laughs> boat. But by the time I pull Jerome, I'd like to be a solid like 200, 225 pounds and then see where I go from there with my frame and musculature. Okay. Okay. Hey, Ricky, Ricky Walker sent us another one of these pairs lifting things for 499 US dollars. Thank you, Ricky. You're a legend. Appreciate you, brother. Everyone's flying in with these super chats. Really, really generous. Thank you. Guys. guys i'm sorry yeah, um, about the goddamn echo this was a concept that happened like yesterday or the day before and i don't have my computer and i don't have fancy headphones i'm in a gym crammed into the one place my kids didn't adulterate and infiltrate and destroy <laughs> but i'm going to try to get all professional this is a pilot program work with me work with me well rick ricky's just just slammed down 50 49.99 these stickers are going to be hilarious ricky thank you man you're getting you you're starting to we're starting to get a a uh a uh, arm gods Valhalla three level uh, slush fun going on here for some tricks or something. Look I, don't it. Know. I got the shirt on. I recycled it today. It was officially one week, so I'm like, I can wear it again and still be a beast. Very nice. Are you sore, you know? bro? Are you sore? Uh, yeah, I was a little bit, but I'm at the point where I started uh, playing around again yesterday, kind of getting on the horse. Gears are spinning with a guy like Jerome waiting in the wings. Thought I had some nagging injuries, so. Mm -hmm. I'm not like a rest recovery guy. When my brain is going, I have to like yep. move. Know, Whether that's good or bad, I don't know, but I'm trying it. I know I'm competing in two weeks' time. I'm pulling in an eight-man tournament, um, and it's eight really solid pullers in this region. The only the only guy missing from it is Lachlan Adair. But the, other than that, it's the best eight guys in the region. So Matthew Rangi and the rest, as you can imagine. And I got straight back into training. Literally, I arrived. I got straight back into training. And I'll, I'll tell you, what, like the, the last lift, we all know the stupid lift I'm doing. The last lift I did before I left for Ireland, I lifted 55 kilos, and I did it really, really, really well. By my standards, really well. I lifted 46 kilos today and not as well as I did the 55. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, how long? Like, It's really interesting using that lift as data to see how much soreness actually takes off you. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I grabbed a couple dumbbells today, and like I got a weight stack here that I've had this gym for probably about 10 years now, and I know like how certain handles or certain things feel with how I grab a stack, and dude, I, I tried to put a stack on with a handle that was usually like a nice warm-up, and I couldn't budge the fucking thing, like with my elbow and everything, I was like, it made me very insecure, so what happens when you're insecure, you want to fuck around more, but that's your body telling you, you're like, hey, you're stupid, you probably boot down, take a rest, but that doesn't work up here. 
fucked up. Like, yeah. I need to move that fucking thing move easy by the end of the day. Of the or day. me and Jerome are canceled. That's canceled. That's it. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I want to be back to that 55 before I get it. Hey, talking about injuries now, guys, uh, again, forgive me if I if the audio stuffs up for this. I do apologize. But I have a call-in question. Uh, you might recognize the voice, Rob. Um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have a call-in question. Let me just tee it up. Here we go. Hey, Ryan and Rob. I hope the podcast is going well, guys. Uh, just a quick question for Rob, if I may. Um, I'm wondering if he remembers in round two when I was um, driving on the A-side, if he remembers my elbow popping and cracking um about sort of on two occasions but sort of several pops and cracks occurred um i've never heard anything like it and it's never happened to me before in a match and um yeah i just wondering if you felt it or heard it and um yeah um I'm not saying it would of course changed the result of the match but it sort of from then on slightly got in my head especially in the third round that appeared quite a quite a quite a bit more comfortable for him um and i think you know the later rounds i just went for it you know i even got a nosebleed for god's sake so i was just uh put absolutely effling into it but um yeah just a quick question just wondering if he remembers that round two me driving slightly on the a side and just hearing some pops and cracks did he did he hear or feel it that's my question cheers guys have a good one there we go mr uh, james wall uh yeah did i hear any pops or cracks, pops or cracks? um no no, but he he, he he indicated that that might have happened. But but here's the truth. Here's the truth. Came at it. Not gonna give. Yeah. Same thing happened to Ben. Ben threw his his shoulder and elbow at it. And if I can secure my landing drive, one of us is gonna break. And just so far, it hasn't been me. Hasn't been me. Yeah, because I mean, I don't you, know. So we could say it's a popped arm, and maybe it is, and I hope that heals up. Or, or it could just be that uh, once I accepted the hook and got my uh, angles down better and my shoulder more committed, that I multiplied my own my own strength. My own strength. Mm. Do you think uh, James Walls, James Walls, uh, I guess, uh, inability to get through you on the night was that? um was that a, was that what was that was that a lack of muscular strength was that a lack of uh rotation through joints and 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 we just heard that he busted himself was it was it a lack of conditioning um no or was it no i just think that um i, think, um, I mean let's call I mean, it what it is i think I was, I was too strong i was too strong um i think um, he got everything you could want you could in an arm wrestling match. arm wrestling match he got the start he got the start he hit his lane he hit his he got me, he got me supinated, which is his pronation, a nine inch pad nine to inch drag and drive. Drag and drive. You know, he had all the positive yeah. angles he could want for a guy who pulls like he does. He does. And if I was able to come through that, what more could he have wanted as far as how the match fell and landed? The only difference was I was able to nip some of the speed out of it in the beginning instead of going backwards and trying to avoid the hook. I more or less was just like, let's just sink it. So what could he have done differently? I don't know. I know in a defensive, a defensive low end hook there, when I commit, there, when I, commit I, I put a lot of I even top of the heavyweights, the brakes on them. The I've beat walk champions and everything from that spot right there. That spot right there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I actually missed the round where he flash pin you, round one. Because mm. that was just a speed mm. thing. You just missed the jump or what? But I came back into the room and saw um, round two, which looked like a war. A little bit, a little bit of both. I think part of it was like part of it was like the smart thing you want to do is kind of like is kind of like opposite with people, like a top roll hooker, hook or hooker, top roller kind of thing. Kind of thing. But mm. his setup is so his good and fast so good and that my initial was to kind of like maybe try to low hand him, kind of low hand him, and it happened so crisp that so crisp that with my body lines, my body lines, he was on top of it too deep and too coiled, and it felt very fast. Very, very, aggressive. very aggressive very aggressive and then when I where, said, where oh, were you at said, where oh. were you at mentally after round one because i know you've had oh, you've oh, had problems oh, before destroyed, where... destroyed. <laughs> what, what's, what, tell me, what are the demon what are the demons like for you because i know the demons for me like like and I, uh, we'll talk about it more in a bit but the demons for me going into ron were way more present 
than any it, it was a pressure match for me it's like well okay here's here's your opportunity ryan so the demons were out well and truly as i was waiting to get called up so what were your demons like after being one nil down yeah one nil down i mean it, it just felt like it just felt like it felt very it felt very even worse than worse. like pulling like Pulling Sasha and Zerab, because mm -hmm. because it, those guys I could feel the foothold, and, and if I had done something different, something different, I really believe. Like I, I think really the Magic James Wall proved all what a little bit of commitment is and how different it is than like being caught in a spot. You know, hooking isn't hooking. Like I didn't hook Sasha or Zerab ever. I was caught like hanging out back here. Back here, Sasha was very uncomfortable because I wasn't really table ready. Zerab was a little more table ready, but unsure and unconfident. Confident. James, I was confident, James, I was but confident, I got caught in that spot like and that drilled spot down and on it. Drilled down on it. I was kind of like, kind of like, it almost felt unavoidable to play his game. To play his game. It was mm -hmm. very much like Sylvain Perón. I pulled Sylvain Perón. I had an idea to talk about him. When you go and look at Sylvain's look at history, 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 nobody really talked about that guy. And he had a very good, a very lane to cut in and down on people. You walk off at 220. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. So when I realized, like, maybe this guy's more proficient set in his lane. Let me just scoop it up and just see what my arm can actually do. Can actually do. It changed things. It changed things. Whereas with like the Rob, the Rob, I just did the same thing over and over, over and over. Sword, all my own sword. Yeah, I got you. I got you. But yeah, the talk, the negative talk, is talk is real. Yeah. Like I said, for me, actually, let me just shout out to Ricky Walker because he sent us two more pairs doing random things um each at 19.99 thank you ricky man you, you, you're absolutely crushing it <laughs> we can't thank you enough uh really really appreciate it brother thank you so much for all these pairs doing random yeah, stuff and we have one. somebody mentioned the echo the echo uh uh i don't know we need we need a fucking know, stimulus package, package or something package. we're aware of these guys we're <laughs> echo guys echo guys we're fucking we're Okay, this is like an off the cuff thing we planned yesterday. I'm in my fucking basement. I'm not in a studio. Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. It's a Saturday, too. You know how busy my Saturdays are? Saturdays are. <laughs> John Hendricks has said congrats on the on the win, Rob. Um, it was good. You know, uh, Rob. Oh, what? Uh, let's get let's get to uh, let's get to the question. Uh, how did how did I go against Ron? No one's seen the match yet. It's not out there. How would you how would you say that went? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you know people what? will slash on you People for it, you for it, but but you got to keep context. It's context. wrong bath. It's wrong and, bath. And if there's ever somebody if, if there's ever that somebody like an adult can say, when I grow up, I want to be like, I want to be like wrong bath. Ron Even bath. at 60 years it's old, it's there's old. a lot of guys that will be happy in their 20s, 30s, and 40s being like Ron at 60. Like Ron at 60. Ron is Ron uh, is on the Mount Rushmore uh, of arm wrestling to me. Arm wrestling to me. So so. Your match went your well, match went there was a lot of indication, lot of indication on, round one, on round one. And then I think you got a little bit scared of this creepy scared, ass side pressure. Ass side pressure and, and, and you played a little survival. A little survival. Which, which Ron being a little too Ron eager, little too he eager. almost fell into that lane that, that, that trapped lane. that trapped Stoika. Yeah, Stoika. You, you know, you know, I think if I could if I could have had like if I could go back in time and do it again. And I'll add this context to it. He, here's where people are gonna say, look at Ryan and his delusional stuff going here but this is this is full delusional mode right now if i could go back in time do it again and ron didn't have that same opportunity i it was still the first time for him i think with the, the exact same strength i had i think i could have won the match if i had made different decisions at different times um round round one for me it was uh the nerves were settled after we slipped i, I recognized okay well i'm in this match there wasn't any any balance or imbalance in the slip and when we got into the straps, I, I took a deep grip, a deep top rollers grip. Um, I didn't, I didn't run, I didn't, uh, I didn't go shallow. I, I took a deep top rollers grip, and that was the grip I should have stuck with for, for the entire night. Um, being a best of five, I, I, I experimented really significantly. But I think if I had a stuck with a deep top rollers grip for all three rounds, I think I would have, I would have got a stop, and he wouldn't have been able to finish it. Um, I think that because round one. Our peak force, I really truly believe that our peak force was very, very similar. I could handle his peak force. He could handle my peak force. Where, where the difference became was he could sustain that peak force for longer than I could. And that was what really genuinely shocked me. It was we, ready to go. We barely moved. At Santa, we stayed there. We stayed there. It went a little little his side, went a little my side, and then I broke down. Um, and and I, I was really stunned at how much 
sustainable side pressure that man had with a flat wrist. Yeah. His, yeah. his wrist was flat. My wrist was kind of bent. I actually think I had the better hand position. Um, but the man's side pressure just kept on, kept on keeping on. When you look at some of the dog fights he's won, he's won throughout like his career with even guys like say like John or John or some of the guys that are of that level like Michael Todd and stuff, Todd and stuff they'll win often like often once he gets that shoulder committed and just drives it. Drives he's got a positive shoulder on you. Shoulder on you. He beats pretty much anybody. Pretty much anybody. Now I I, I did actually. I mean, if you, you'll see the match of guys at premieres uh, in about thirty hours time on the Arm Gods channel. Um, but I went fully ugly King's move and I, when you go King's move, here's the thing, like a lot of people like to hate on the King's move. A lot of people like to hate on the athlete doing the King's move, but he, I, I always think that the rules are there to be used and also the rules are there to be pushed. I I'm aware that I dipped under the table. I am, but I'm also aware that the referees are too slow to call that. And that dip will get you the stop and that dip will get you another three seconds of him gassing his hand. And so, so I did all that. I'm happy to admit it. I did it because uh, you, you, you just I'm one of the guys that you <laughs> talked about that don't, that don't, that don't, like, that shit. don't like that shit. Yeah. I mean, there's guys that have guys won championships and championships will and sell, that, sell that. But I just think that arm, think wrestling, arm wrestling is supposed to be like, to be like, once your arm is well, straight, you, you for, for me, for me, the that. thing is, I, I, I will never complain. I, you, you won't see me like, like round three, Ron never pinned me, but he was awarded the win because I was in a foul position, uh, holding him. I was holding them up in a foul position, and they 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 said winner. And and you you what you won't see me do is argue with a referee who makes a call like that because that's the right call. But I would have lost if I didn't do that. It would have been over two seconds earlier. But I thought stuff it. I'm doing it because you never know. This two seconds could be the if I get a restart here, his hand was gone and like. I know talking to Ron afterwards, he was and talking to Tim Bresnan and everyone afterwards, the Ron's hand was was really starting to, to flop back. Which oh was, yeah, he was fucked. Oh yeah, he was fucked. Yeah. Like like he did the he King's did move one oh one not to do with the King's move. Do with the King's move. <laughs> which is which is you can't yeah. do shit with that straight on position <laughs> except, survive. except survive. You're hoping that guy You're driving on you breaks his own shit. Shit. And then at some point in time, you stand up, you stand up and get that position yeah. with his hand blocked. His hand blocked. If you kind of just lay, lay off that a little bit, like, like I called the king for like the Venus Y trap, Venus you fall into that trap yourself. You get that hand and you lay down. Down. This is why you're not gonna pull why that shit with me, that dude. Shit with me, I'm dude. gonna sit there in the middle and make your ass stand up again. Stand up again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we 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 have to talk about that. Like, what after you? We've seen each other arm wrestle in person now twice. The match between you and I is is inevitable at some point. Like it, it is going to happen, um, and highly likely it's going to happen this year. What what shape? Uh, were you are you bold enough to declare what shape you'd use against me? What shape? What 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 is? What, what shape? Is? What shape? What shape? Are you going to pull your well, top? Well, you hook you in? With me with shape? No, no, no. As in, like, what, diamond, as in, what what shape of arm wrestling are you going to do? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do oh, that? Oh, dude, like, do oh, this? Yeah, um, yeah, um, okay, you saying you're going to take, you're gonna take my hand is absurd. Hand is absurd. The only way you're going to have to give my hand a problem is if you bunch up and ball up and me trying to hang on to you gets me in trouble. You can do all the riser lifts, all the arson lifts, all the donkey Kong lifts, donkey Kong lifts. You're not gonna break my hand and threaten my wrist. It's not gonna wrist. fucking happen. Gonna Maybe happen. you'll play some Maybe bullshit victimization in the straps, in the straps, and get something really get weird. Something really but weird. I said in the beginning of the year when I pulled Brandon, Brandon Allen, Allen. Brandon Allen, I didn't lose that I match. Lose that like coming off, like coming off, back into it, a little bit insecure, secure. Not as much trained as I want to be. I want as to be. I move forward. As I move forward. It's gonna become evident. Like become evident. I'm not gonna lose this. I'm not gonna lose this year. I'm you sorry, you're not going to be the sorry, one. You're not going to be the one. I, I, think, <laughs> that I, go to, I think that I go to, as the year goes as by, year I'll go to East versus West, West and really West shake the trail of those rankings as high as I want to go. I want to go. At 105 kilos, is that the intent? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would like to think that 95 is in striking distance, but if I feel thick and happy and I've got the brain for it, I mean, I'm a naturally bigger person than someone like someone like Arakli. Arakli. Yeah. So hey, actually, I fall, talk, in there, I fall in there comfortably. Talking about like, like I, I am someone that, I mean, you, you've seen me in person now. You know what frame I'm carrying, all that sort of stuff. I, I, I'm happy to admit I'm, I'm carrying body fat as well, but 
I get sick of people telling me I should go down to 85 kilos and that I'd be the most competitive there. Um, my, I, I personally feel like my body weight, my range is 105 kilos. That's where I, I perform best. I, I know I could get to 100, and sh- no worries, and I'd be leaner. But my personal data on my own personal performance is I, 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 I compete better when I've got this amount of body fat on me. Um, I think that the reason that people think that I'm small and, and and I actually used to think you were small. You, you, you'll recall that I used to say you were before I'd met you in person, that you were a, uh, what did I call you? A small frame person or something? Yeah, you call me, you call me a, a, a fucking lightweight heavyweight or something weird. Yeah. <laughs> Turns overgrown, out Rob and I are. Overgrown lightweight. Overgrown lightweight. That's it. Overgrown lightweight. That's it. Which is Turns actually out Rob, all the guys we have at 105 right now, except for John. Right now, except for John. Yeah. Turns out Rob and I are the exact same height. I think you and I are within a an eighth of an inch of each other in terms of height. Like yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. I don't know. It depends who's. You got to put that eighth of an inch in there. You can't just say that we're the same. Height. Yeah, I, <laughs> I could. Well, I was actually conceding that. I was like thinking, oh, you never know. Rob might be slightly taller, but I, I, I'm growing my hair, so that might change. Yeah, that's what it is. We've got the biggest hairdo of the day. Hairdo of the day. <laughs> but you know, I think the reason, the, one of the main reasons why people who observe me on the internet think that I'm small is I blame Lachlan Adair. Lachlan Adair's ratios of biceps, chest, shoulders look like a typical guy who's five foot 10. Lachlan Adair, ladies and gentlemen, is six foot two. Okay. He's the exact same height as Rob and the same height as I am. Six foot two. So when I stand next to Lachlan and people think he's five ten, they think I'm five nine or something like that. So yeah, 85 kilos is gone. I'm at 105. Yeah, that's why. Right. Yeah, when you get older too, your frame, too, your frame gets a little more, a little more barrel chested and boxy. And boxy. I guarantee you, if I got down to, I got down to ninety five kilo, I'd be a bigger kilo, version of me than I was at like, I was at like thirty, thirty. You know, I think my you know, frame just gets bigger. The shirts that I've had, the shirts that I've had, I don't go shopping for myself. I put the same shirt on I've worn for ten years, and I'm like, and I'm like, fucking, fucking shrunk my shit, my show. I'm just bigger. I'm just bigger. Yeah, for sure. Now I like it. Henry, Henry agrees. I'm six foot one. Good stuff, Henry. I see you there. Hey, Rob. Uh, one of the main things that was uh, a feature of Valhalla Three, um, and I and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually give this guy a call. Um, was the 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 craziness the tack match? Now, um, before I get your thoughts on it, I'm gonna give Uncle John Thompson a call, and uh, we're gonna see how the aftermath is for him, and let's see if he answers. Uncle John, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're about to get a Travis Page and apology. <laughs> I don't. I think he's going to oh, stand. Firm. Hey, what's going on, Uncle John? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm just up north in the uh, white north of Minnesota for an Easter weekend. My first Easter at home in ten years, if you can believe it. Unreal, <laughs> unreal. John, can yeah. you, can you hear Rob? Rob, say good day for us. What's up, John? Oh, I, I can hear Rob, but just barely. Okay, I'm going to have to turn Rob up. It, Rob's, Rob's been echoing all night. Everyone's been hating Rob on his audio. So we're Yeah, why is it got to be Why is it gotta be me? Why can't it be the way you set this up? Why yeah. can't it be my it's tech definitely advisor? You. It's definitely <laughs> the you, Rob. It's definitely you. You knew anyway, you were getting on this show. John, you knew I was going to um, come down here with either coffee or wine and just log on. I don't have a studio. <laughs> it's all right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you one. We'll, we'll make this show so successful. You're going to get me a studio? Wow, this partnership is going better than I thought. I'm already in the green. <laughs> Rob. Anyway, John, man, um, how is the aftermath of what, for at least is in my knowledge, the first uh, insane, what was it called? It was called a, a what match? Extreme, hardcore. Hardcore. A hard, first hardcore belt. Um, how is the aftermath for you, man? Uh, well, you know, I seem to be making a career out of uh, these very divisive moments in uh, in the sport. Um, I kind of figured out a, a better way to live my life. I just I just don't exist on social media anymore, and then I just go do stupid things, and then I don't really <laughs> have to hear about the fallout of anything. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. And you, you, like you don't even yeah. have, you don't even have to see the comments right now. This is just an audio call. You're not on there, so it doesn't that matter is, what that you is you know, Beautiful. if if you don't see it, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So that evolution, John, like, because you're a good arm wrestler, and particularly in the last sort of six to twelve months, you've really turned into a solid arm wrestler in terms of some of the wins I'm seeing. Um, but yeah. 
but this this angle uh, has this been brewing for a long time? And you like like what what is it about this angle that appeals to you? Yeah, so I think the things for me is that uh, this this match concludes my list of things that I ever wanted to do in our match. You can go back to my channel from, you know, four, five years ago when I first started, whenever that was, 2018 or 19, and I kind of lay out, I, you know, I had a few things I wanted to do. I really, really wanted to go on arm wars. I really wanted to be an arm wrestler that got paid to arm wrestle. And I always wanted to see, you know, I was, I was born to be a professional wrestler. My body did not cooperate in that department, but I always wanted to try to bring some kind of different uh, style of entertainment to the sport. And I found that this was probably the opportunity to do it. And, um, you know, I'm not very good at doing things in half measures. So uh, <laughs> I, I think we, I think we floored it. And I think uh, it, it couldn't have, it couldn't have really, you know, got too much crazier well, in my opinion we're talking about but i i want to only want to make it clear one thing clear that this match was in my mind that this match is for me at 70 because yeah. when i'm 70 years old if if i had the opportunity to do this and i didn't i would have been like oh man could you imagine how crazy that would have been and i would have been pissed at myself then but now i don't got to worry about it i'm the first to do it and hopefully, uh, maybe the only to to ever do it in the in the sport. So mm, yeah, we'll see. Well, you, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people say, "Oh, it was a completely scripted thing. Oh, it was fake." I, tell me if I'm correct here in my assessment, John. That 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 was particularly for round one. Like both of you guys came in with the absolute intent of beating the other. You just happened yeah, to be, well, you just happened to be the dude that was able to do that. And you, you at will could have top rolled him, but you then, after you established, I've got everything. You then, you then put on a show. Well, you know, it's it's I've done that in a lot of matches, right? If I find that, you know, my, my main concern in arm wrestling is to have a good match. If I beat someone in my mind, if I beat someone three zero or six zero, whatever it is, or if they beat me like that, it's it's a throwaway me it's a throwaway match you know unless you have two really really big names in that match so you know I've, i did the same thing with like uh my match with mika sacralize in vegas right when i stayed up high uh and and outside it was it was a mismatch but as soon as i came inside then mm. it was on right and it led to a couple amazing matches yep now for, for people that think it's fake number one like I did spend about seven hours in the ER that night. And Rob, uh, please send my uh, heartfelt thanks to your wife. She uh, was wonderful in keeping my blood inside my body. Uh, so that was really, really good. Yeah, she often gets dragged into being the uh, community nurse when people get fucked up. So Heather's yeah. on point. That was, that was very helpful. <laughs> um, now, secondarily, for I, I have heard the the um, the fake thing going on, or the people saying it's fake. But but you got to remember, like I'm an like I will fully admit I'm an idiot. I'm I'm a stupid ignoramus to be doing this match in the first place. But I'm not so stupid that I'm going to let Evan false start me to infinity straight into a pad of tax. <laughs> I mean, like like Evan Evan is not is not. Uh, nice enough to be like yeah we'll, we'll fake the match but you'll get the win the only thing that hurt evan more than those tacks was losing to me he yeah. hates losing to me <laughs> <laughs> tell me tell me and about now, the tell me about the pain of that like it, it, it i saw a number of tacks lodged into your arm like yeah. many 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 times and i've seen the i've seen scratches the 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 aftermath of of evan's hand i haven't seen the back of your hand but i imagine it's pretty similar what was it? What was it like? Was it was it was it painful? Was the adrenaline high enough? You know, the, the adrenaline was definitely high enough. I would say, out of everything, the only thing. Now, this is going to tell you a lot about who I am. The only thing I regret about the match is that it wasn't painful enough. 
<laughs> it's uh, I, I, I like honestly, I was in, I was expecting something far worse than than what we ended up with. Now that doesn't mean it felt felt good. Like it did not feel good to be pu- pulling tacks out of my arm mid match, but it was nowhere near uh, what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, there you go. Well, it 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 it, it actually looked. For me, it got the adrenaline going. Like I, I actually, knowing both you guys, I was expecting that it was going to be like. Uh, I thought oh, this won't actually rev me up because I, I knew I, who was going to win in my mind. I thought, yeah, Uncle John's going to dominate this. But you know, when you guys came out, it actually, like the hormonally, it made me go, "Oh my goodness, this is actually happening!" And I was nervous for you guys and watching, and I was drawn in. So it for me, it succeeded in what it was intended to do. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, controversial. Uh, you know, Paul, he came up with the idea. They wanted to do it. They want to, you know, have arm gods seated in the realm of arm wrestling as something very, very different. You know, very, you know, wild. I, I mean, I don't know. Sounds like they're going to do some shock table stuff. I haven't really seen that yet. Um, now, you know, the irony you, is, you know, is after all that bullshit. Up. You didn't even walk away with the worst injuries of the day. Imagine that. <laughs> so you did all that I extreme know, right? shit, and you I might know. not even be top three on the list. Because I know Brendan broke every bone and connective tissue in his elbow, and James Wall just <laughs> said he popped a bunch of shit. So that's got to be way more healing time than than some tack holes and a and a cut on the head. Dude, I could I could do I could do another tack match today, no problem. Like, yeah, no I was a I was a roofer for a long time. Getting stabbed and, and, and cut open with flashing was a daily occurrence. Brand new. Yeah, I mean, hey, if if somebody's there to pay me to do stupid shit, I'll do a lot of stupid shit. RVJ versus Uncle John left arm tack match. <laughs> nah, you ain't gonna see me oh, do no fucking tack match. <laughs> I got what you call left, a level bro. of uh, self respect. I've never woke up one day and had dreams of hurting myself on purpose oh yeah I'm now, i've done a lot of shit that's got me hurt uh, and i've done a lot of things that were very donkey sauce that i've regretted the next day but never uh premeditated sure sure i mean you know for me like i'll tell you what like maybe i'm just super weird but it was it was borderline spiritual experience for me like I, yeah, you're I like those motherfuckers who put clips no, through their dude. nipples and hang from the ceiling and shit. Like, <laughs> like you ever see those freaks who put like hooks in their body and hang, and they say that it's like orgasmic. Those are some freaky yeah. ass motherfuckers, John. You might have a lane. Just get on OnlyFans right? and start doing weird shit like that. Yep. You'll make way more money. <laughs> Probably that is what I could. I could bring the table around the country to all the weirdos. Man, this yeah, might be, have I a tug of war, people, with the hooks through your people. balls or your nipples, and see if you can out tug of war them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, John, man. John, I w- I just wanted to say, well done. It, it, I thought it took courage to do what you did, not only in the the pain respect, which seems like that was a walk in the park for you, but in terms of just putting yourself out there as a first in the sport to do something like that. I thought it took balls and took a lot of a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of heat and criticism from a big percentage of the uh, the Armistice community, but I think well done. I think there's a place for it for sure. And I, look, I think what you did, if Vince McMahon had been in the room, he would have been like, sign that man. I'm taking it. Oh, listen, he'll be the Mick Foley. He's the willingness to put self in harm's way. I mean, I've, I've said my piece on the match. It's not my cup of tea. But however, if you want to create the sideshow, and maybe it's a sideshow of arm wrestling as opposed to it being a face of arm wrestling, I mean, there's no dispute. You did some shit that I wouldn't be too keen on unless I was like a PCP or some weird shit, man. Like being willing to just throw yourself in harm's way for the show, man, fuck the people. That's why I got biceps so I can just flex at people. That's my show. Eat it, motherfuckers. <laughs> See, Rob, that's why you have the 155 IQ and I'm just down somewhere in the 80s. Well, don't go say on this show. People think that me and Ryan are about 155 added up. I think I think one of the one of the one, one of one of the days on this show, I think we'll have to do a uh, a live IQ test or something like that and show our show our scores. No, because with my echo, I'll be answering twice. 
So it'll take my first answer for my second answer, <laughs> and you'll find a way to make it my fault. And then I got a fucking 30 IQ that I'll, you'll run with for forever. There you go. Hey, didn't your daughter, daughter Rob, get shocked that you and I, she saw a photo of you and I and thought, hang on, how, what the, what's going on here? Yeah, probably like a lot of people on this live stream in the internet. They thought that there was a blood feud, that this was like what's going on with Gaza and Israel, that the fact that we're in the same room and someone didn't die, mainly you, and they were thought that everything I told them was a lie, like when they find out about like Santa Claus and shit, like you've been lying to me this long. How are you guys hanging out? And it's like, you know, guys, but fucking real. Nothing was really, there was no blood drawn. We, we had our little riffs. And then even now, my first trip for arm wrestling for the world was supposed to be in Japan, 2005. Now, I know guys who went. I was going to go with Tim Bresnan. He said it was a wonderful time. Let's not forget that once upon a time, Japan bombed the shit out of America. And then America dropped a couple nuke fucking A-bombs over there. But yet here we are, and we're fine to go to Japan. We're all cool. Mm. Good point. Good point. Yeah, my daughter called me out, though. She fact-checked me. They were, like, roasting me. They're like, so wait a minute. I'm like, whoa, 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 guys. Like, you know. I don't have to start well, a Jordan. podcast with them, but we're all right. <laughs> now here we are in a fucking podcast. Here we are. Maybe I'm a hypocrite. Full circle Maybe I'm of life. Well, John, well done again, man. You and Evan, uh, no doubt, will have something to talk about over a beer for many, many, many years to come. Oh, uh, that'll yeah. definitely go down in history for sure. Oh, yeah. That'll Absolutely. be some shit. Be like, remember when? That'll even be on like an arm wrestling trivia channel like 25 years from now. And they'll be like, who were the two fucking donkeys that shed all that blood and did the tack match? <laughs> and they'll be like, bing. It'd be like, Uncle John, fucking, yeah, that's the dude. No one's going to know who beat Plum and Dimitrov in 2010, but they're definitely going to know who cut their fucking head open and, and, and like, almost bled the fuck out. And I'll tell you what, man, I went in that bathroom after you, and I was like, holy God, that is a lot of blood. Yeah, I, I, I was in there with him trying to stop the bleeding, and I, I, it was shocking. Like, it, it, But that's actually the second most blood in an arm wrestling tournament. You can't even have the most blood. Because I saw Tim what Lewis get pistol blood? whipped. And that thing looked like a goddamn kitty swimming pool. <laughs> that shit was scary as fuck. Terrible. Hey, John, uh, man, we'll let you go, but thank you so much for stopping in. You know, you actually solved the, the echo problem for Rob here. Now, I'm for everyone in the chat, when, when Uncle John hangs up, I, I'm betting uh, Rob's echo returns. We'll see. But anyway, Uncle well, well, John, thank you very much for joining us. affect my echo? Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it fixed it. But anyway. See yeah, you, heal up, dude. All right. Bye-bye. All right. How's that your echo? Beauty. You don't have to acknowledge the internet. You can just kind of duck off. Like when I was yeah. getting all that shade that night, I got all kinds of drunk and was ripping into Devin with Leonidas like about a year ago, more than a year ago now. You know, when when Devin was breaking my balls with Leonidas and I got all crazy. Yeah. I know you. I know that I'm going to get a backlash. You know what I said? Eh, fuck it. Just won't log on today. <laughs> Case that <laughs> I. It's it's the way to go. I mean, there there is a when you when you get to a certain point within the realm of just attention, people just by sheer numbers of it, there's going to be the full spectrum. And if you're someone as controversial as uh, as Uncle John is in doing the tack match, you're going to get a lot. So um, he has solved the echo for us, though. Look, everyone is still saying no echo. Well done, Uncle John. You've fixed the damn echo. Good stuff. Yeah, Atlanta. That was over a year ago. I want to say it was February of last year and that's about the time i said self what am i gonna do am i gonna be an arm wrestler or am i gonna be a sideshow so i decided to be an arm wrestler but i was dead set if you go back and watch that it was more my reaction and in, in, in the way i escalated but i meant everything i said like i was willing to pull the united for all the money back then i was wide mm -hmm. open to them turning around i was wide open to a hundred thousand dollar match with devin and people said you want to pull Devin for a hundred thousand i said no if i did what you do i think i'd beat you which means but I would need the money to make it worthwhile. I'm not going to do it for a hundred thousand dollars. Well, what would mm -hmm. it take? I said, yeah, hundred thousand dollars. Give me a hundred thousand dollars. Give me six months to get super fucking juicy. Yeah, I think I win. But that's not on the table for me. So everyone just thinks I'm talking shit. But I stand firm on that. So moving on past that. That was a day that I was a little elevated. But if you hang around me for more than a weekend, the guys in Ireland will know. Eh, that's kind of who I am a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I got a few of your thoughts there on the the Uncle John match. Um, I didn't see your video specifically. The, where, like, oh, this is bullshit. Let's stop this right now. Are you subscribed? I actually, I am. I am. I just don't watch, though. How many times have you subscribed and unsubscribed to me through the years? 
Never. I, I've always uh, been. I don't know, man. All right, so go always. on. You didn't watch my video. Always. Oh yeah, I didn't watch your video. I ha- I only watched the ones when you could take my my bicep curls. But I want to know where do you, do you where do you see that in the sport? Like like how does like if you're managing the damn sport, um, how do you, how, where do you where do you put those matches? The, the, so the, what the I WWE? what I said last night in my video, um, I don't think that like those types of things are the biggest problem in the sport. What I thought was the biggest problem in sport for us with growth is the things I've been talking about, like the extreme, like unchecked level of gear that people think now is the norm. But with extreme matches, I think if you lump it in as arm wrestling with arm wrestling, then any potential big time growth, uh, they're going to come across that and be like, what the fuck is this? Like sometimes you have super professional athletes. Sometimes you have guys walking around bleeding. Like it's a mess. But if you make it like a sideshow kind of like and you 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 really promote the fact that it's like an exhibition fun kind of theatrical piece within a tournament for entertainment purposes and not an arm wrestling match but it's like an entertainment exhibition with arm wrestling it kind of like porno you know you see the guy that like works in the, like the gas station and the girl comes in for a lube job you're not really promoting gas stations that's not how all gas stations are they're just using it as like a backdrop to get some weird freaky shit going on you know what i mean the guy like, hey, you need a lube job? And it's like, oh, fill her up, baby. Wow, I just ad-libbed that. I could be a director. But check it out. Like, um, if you use it as kind of like a front for those types of things, and, and then you can kind of have your, like, your little shock match stuff, I think there's a, a place for it. I just don't like that it's put directly in line with the professional yeah. arm wrestling, yeah. which is I think like... It's gonna take some, I think it's going to take some time for, for the audience as well to understand that they're there is that clear delineation and we as arm wrestlers understand that as well. And I, I think that um, it, like, 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 don't get me wrong. Those two guys are real arm wrestlers. They, they, they are quite decent, high level pro arm wrestlers. They're not, they're not bums by any stretch. So right. it's real arm wrestling, but, but it is a show as well. And, and well, and it takes and, away from them too, because I think uncle John really has leveled up in his arm wrestling game. And he's yeah. kind of, that match kind of cheapened himself. Everyone knows beer man's unhinged. You know what I mean? He's a fucking crazy, you know, guy that you don't know oh, who you're dude. getting when you talk to him sometimes. But he's a really good arm wrestler. I mean, I think he had points of time, which I don't know where he stacked up with Mike Gould, Earl, Matt, Devin. I mean, but I think he at times he's been like maybe even top three super heavyweight in Canada. That's yep. fucking legit considering you have such a legit field of people up there. And I mean, I, I think he beat I think he won his match against Jeff Dave as well. He did. He beat Jeff Dave. Um which is super he, serious because Jeff Dave was always in like that. He like, beat Brandon Allen as well. Wall. He beat Brandon Allen left comfortably as well. I don't know right. what Brandon's left was like, but I mean, he's, it's Brandon Allen. It's Brandon Allen. Hey, yeah, uh, we got Paul Lynn in the chat. Good old Paul Lynn. He's going to be featuring up against, of course, Australia's uh, Lachlan Adair very shortly as well. And he he's chimed in on this this uh, this subject. He says, I, I'm a bit torn on this topic. I see pros and cons. I feel like there is a place for everything. I I, 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 f- I don't feel torn on it at all. I feel like it's awesome. It's just got to be framed correctly. And like you said, maybe not necessarily in the same event as as a pure arm wrestling card, but I think there's absolutely a place for like John and Evan right. are gonna make Listen, doing that. You gotta make it they you gotta make it like you gotta make it like fucking restrooms, right? You got a woman's room, you got a men's room. You can't money those lines. Both people can go piss, shit, wash their hands in both places, but they're both bathrooms, but you got to kind of like separate it. When you start money in the waters and you have the half man, half woman in there, that's some weird shit. Because I mean, I, I don't I don't want my kids going into the, 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 the room and there's a fucking guy with a pecker hanging out, but it's okay because he belongs there. No, no, no. Clear lines, similar directions, similar thing. You know, you go over here, you go pee pee poo poo, same as over here. But that bullshit about like it's the same, it's, it is, but it's not. You got to keep a little separation there so the professionals can get the opportunities and whatnot from the professionals. And the people on the side shows, hey, if Vince McMahon's watching and he comes and picks Uncle John up for $100 million, guess what? I He's might consider a tag match. Exactly. <laughs> hey, jo- Josh Rowe, thank you for the Super Chat Man, $1.99 US. He says, next time, just set up some framing guns on the pad. Yeah, well, well Uncle yeah. John, the, 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 as he said, it, it didn't hurt enough. He wanted he, that was the only thing that was disappointing for him was that it actually wasn't painful enough. Oh, that's like I said, he, he got a venue then that he got into some weird shit because people by nature, their survival is to like stay away from things that hurt them. So I mean, is that that's 
Uh, that's that's walking a line right there, man. Maybe Uncle yeah. John's a freak. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next we ask Uncle John to just let us tap his computer without erasing anything, and let's look at his search history. And then we'll really mm -hmm. know what okay. what kind of freak he is. <laughs> mm. That's true. That's true. Hey, look, what was your favorite match of the night in that Valhalla three card out of the seven that matches? I was very keen to see you and Ron Paul. Um, I think Bogdan and, and BLM had a very interesting match. Um, but I mean, how can you look past, uh, well, well, okay. I'm just going to throw the shout out there for Tom Holland. Cause he beat a guy mm -hmm. that was certified mm -hmm. world fucking dominant badass. And I love me some Tom Holland and, and beating the guy and how he beat the guy was like, that was red rocket, red willy swole as fuck, but you can't look past Connor and, uh, Matt Smith. I mean, those two guys went as hard and as dedicated and as deep. I mean, they're the two young-ish, fit guys, and they were outside like fucking shaking mm -hmm. and oxygening and everything. I mean, that was uh, for yeah, an I think Connor, I think watching Connor that, it was and, amazing. Connor went out and vomited. Um, yeah. I mean, I I caught the uh, I caught a taxi with with Matt to the airport the next day, and he was. He was like he was struggling to deal with the pain through his arm and shoulder. He, they'd lost about a baseball size worth of skin off their elbow, both of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was long matches from really deep, committed uh, positions, and uh, you know, so for a person who likes to watch arm wrestling, anybody who gets on any one of these comment section and goes, "Well, arm wrestling's boring to watch," says fucking who? If you think it's boring, that's you. But don't you understand that every show every sport everything is boring to someone ask me to watch nascar but people appreciate it and it fills stadiums bigger than football it nascar fills stadiums up people go there with trailers like a week before they party and they make an event out of it and they're like as big as soccer you know what i mean like in the country they're bigger than football but to, to me it's boring am i the law on what's boring and what's attractive fuck my grant my my grammy used to watch soap operas all day record them and everything that fake ass drama is lame. But who might say that when there's millions of people watching it? The network says otherwise. So if you can't see, if you can see a match like Connor and Matt Smith's, anybody just being exposed to it and go, arm wrestling is boring. There is no selling you. You cannot be sold. You're into some other shit other than anything that has to do with physicality. Yep. I'm with you. You know, one, one thing that I, I have a bit of a gripe about the way that the sport is perceived um, is that a lot of, a lot of the the fan base see I, I feel like there's a misperception there where they 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 almost say someone's career is over because of one loss heaven forbid two losses or three losses um arm wrestling for me is a cumulative sport it, it is not a sport where you live and die by your last match it's 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 a sport where you live and die by the trajectory you are on and the trajectory takes about five to freaking ten matches to work out like really are you headed up are you headed down and like it's a sport that you don't get old in quickly. You, you, you well, there's also there's also ebbs and flows. Like you can be on a trajectory, something could happen, family life, injury, whatever. You go down, people think you're done. Like I made one of my videos called dot 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 and rise again because the fucking arm historian put a video <laughs> rise and fall of RVJ, but that's almost like my career is like complete. Like he he went up and then he came down. That's like we he's can in, talk he's about maybe Alexi Vavoda. He's in the chat, by the way. He's in the chat, by yeah. the way. The arm yeah, you hurt my feelings with that video, Arm Historian, but I think I told you about that. I was did like, you oh, actually, I'm a temperamental you, guy. I'm a sensitive guy. Did you actually go and watch it? Because I know that when we were in Ireland, you told me you hadn't watched it yet. No, I didn't watch it. My kids told you me to learn a lot of things wrong. about you me. I just know it was titled Rise it. and Fall. That's it. Well, yeah, I, you, and then I put a video up going, dot, 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 and rise again. You have to film yourself watching it. Okay, so we need we need a, a real reaction of you watching it as it happens. Oh, my kids started fact-checking me on that. They got One day, they got all crazy. They watched some of your videos. My daughter sent me a video that was hilarious. She was, like, roasting you a little bit because it was a video that somebody made of you, and it was, like, the circus music going, do 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 I'm sure you've seen that one. They were cracking up because they think you're a crazy person. And uh, yeah. they watched the Armour Story one. They're like, I didn't know this. I didn't know this when I lived on a farm. I didn't know. And I'm like fuck man like but the rise yeah. and fall title hurt my hurt me in my feels a little bit and that's why i said like <laughs> dot 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 and rise again and, and rise and rise again yeah it's it's, it's a you long know? story and it, look, the, the one of the most beautiful things about the sport and i don't think any of us could would disagree is the fact that it has more longevity than any other physical sport 
out there. Like anything that involves confrontation, two bodies clashing together, usually you're over by 30. Um, and yeah. At the, at, the, at the top level anyway. We got guys that are in their 60s. I mean, Devin's about to contest for the number one rank in the world. He's about to turn 50. Um, or he's close to 50. Um, we got Crazy George at 72 still would beat almost all bar the top 10 guys in the world at his weight probably. Like, it's crazy, this sport. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the thing is, is I think a genetic uh, attribute is the mental and the physical durability because there there have been a lot of people come and go. It's not like everyone, like, you could compete in your 60s. Durability is a, re- is a real thing. And having the fortitude to uh, sustain an injury or a setback and push through it, you know, while you get the public hating on you, while you get people telling you how much you suck, while you're trying to get back to your old PRs, there's something here that, that has to be a driver. And I think that that, as much as having like a big hand or long limbs or big arms is as much of an attribute as anything, is being able to see yourself through those times. And yes, you can have a long career if you have all those check boxes. It's not like every 50-year-old is going to be competitive at 50. It's mm. There's certain guys that happen to be because they got all those other boxes checked as well. Yeah. Well, uh, like in, in, in Ron's case, I mean, I just got to arm wrestle a 62 year old man who's, he's been arm wrestling for 42 years. And, and I, 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 I talked with him over breakfast the next morning and I asked him like really genuinely, like, how do you feel relative to your peak? Where was your peak? And I said, I asked him the question. I said, in, in a peak in respect to muscular strength and a peak in respect to the conditioning and stability of your joints, like, are they two different things? And he said his muscular peak was between age 40 and 45. And where he said his, his connective tissue peak might, might still be kind of high. Like it's dropped a bit, but it's not, it hasn't dropped as much as the muscular strength has dropped. So I think that's, that's the real secret to arm wrestling is that you, you, it's such a joint heavy sport. I know you don't pull joint heavy, uh, like comparatively, Rob, because you, you like, I'm learning to appreciate it, but you you don't you win most matches by being too muscularly strong. Yeah. Wrist flexion. Yeah, I, I am learning to appreciate that body line and, and 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 lean on it. But I would say that ninety nine percent of the time, if not a hundred, is from my history is I'm a muscular puller. Yeah, I I I I'd love to ask you a question. Like I know Todd Hutchins, longtime rival of yours. Uh, I think you got a pretty decent win record on him. I remember one of the things that he said to me early on in the sport, which I disagreed with him at the time, and I and I now tend to agree, is that I remember he said to me, "Look, at the end of the day, it it only takes a short amount of time to learn how to arm wrestle, and then it's just all about strength." Um, where I th- I was much more invested in it being a, a very intricate sport, technical, all this kind of stuff. Where th- the further I get to- towards my goal, the more I see it as I know I just do need to be stronger. I- I- are you someone that that feels that way that that the sport is predominantly just about strength, or is it- or is it something where the conditioning of your elbows is a big factor and technique as well? Like, what's the biggest? I think I think I, I do think it's both because I think right now um, I have enough strength to put a beat down on anybody in that 105 list strength. Mm. I think that I could sharpen up, get a little more cerebral with my setups because everyone tells me I give a lot away. I could, could get a little faster. I could get a little more initiating. I could maybe learn to use my gifts more um, efficiently. And that comes without any more strength. It's just me using myself more efficiently. You know, it's it like like a martial art or something, boxing gym. You can become a more successful fighter by using your body more efficiently with simple like head movement or twists of the hips and stuff. So sometimes you're good enough if you use yourself efficiently. But yes, strength is always the ace card. But you can go on the flip side and have a shit ton of strength and not know how to apply it. And I don't like when people say technique because then it sounds like a magic wizard card, like you threw down the fucking Charizard in Pokemon or something. It's bullshit. But one doesn't really exist without the other. You need proper application. Uh, you can have strength of surplus and flounder. You, 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 you need a bit of technique ball. and flounder. You like, know, I, I, I'm, I, but I think that I'm in the middle right now where I'm like, I can see like my bicep strength, my back strength, my forearm and wrist strength. And I feel like number for number direction for direction i'm as strong as anybody out there so why can't i have the success if i do the right things because for history i have been doing the right things and part of that pulling some of these guys 
I've made bad adaptations because I pulled for so many years injured. So I fell to lanes that became comfortable that now that I'm getting healthy aren't good for me. They might make me survive, but they're not like me at my best. Okay. Hey guys, I just recognized I saw Drew24 in the chat. Let me know that RVJ has some uh super chats in on his channel that i haven't seen um let me go over to rvj's channel we have one there i can see it from brandon filthy allen filthy brandon allen filthy power 499 the man you smacked around at uh <laughs> knuckles up he says when you guys pull ryan will it be your goal to get to the strap if so rob will you deny him by the way you're by the way you're both small thank you brandon sorry i couldn't bring that up in the, in the chat it should be there. Hopefully, hopefully, this is one of those technical things that it should be pulling all of them through. Um, I do apologize, Brandon, for missing that one. And I see. Uh, well, oh, yeah, that's the only one. No, I got the other. So you know I, get, I get to answer the first question because he asked the first bit Go to ahead. me, which was, Go ahead. Which is, Ryan, will you be your goal to get the strap? Brandon's baiting me into into saying stuff that I, that I, that he already knows the answer to. I had this damn conversation with you, Brandon, so you know exactly what I'm going to say. Um, look, look, look. The truth is that Rob Rob's game. I respect Rob's game as the wrist flexion bicep dominant lane. When I when I, when I look at somebody and I say, "What are their vulnerabilities? What are their strengths relative to mine?" It's it's dumb. It's ridiculous to try to try to win a losing battle. To to quote Devin Larratt, "Don't fight losing battles." I actually concede that to fight his wrist flexion directly. Uh, with my back pressure and pronation would be a losing battle and it would be therefore a, a a mistake to put all my eggs in that basket so thing is no i wouldn't try to get to the straps but i wouldn't i wouldn't want rob to be certain that that's not what i'm trying to do essentially what i'd want rob to do is put too many eggs in the wrist flexion basket out of fear that i am going to try to get to the straps and out of concern that he needs to block that put too much effort there and then subsequently add some side pressure, get over the top of his rotation, be in a superior position to which then he's up the creek. Essentially, the answer is no, I wouldn't need to go. To which then you bounce repeatedly off said biceps. <laughs> Man, that skinny wrist of yours, it'll just, it just get... It'll no, just it's like, just because my forearm's so like, fat, it makes my wrist look skinny. <laughs> now, the truth of the matter is, the problem that if you guys have been taking notes on my matches is I've been pretty comfortable the last three pulling guys and what they have sought most because when i go into a match i i approach it 50 50 lately um the fuck is the balloons that's cool well, look i did i did find the super chat there it is it's on the screen you can read it yourself yes Thank you. so so will we pull the straps i've learned some valuable lessons about uh fighting that game too hard and really Mm -hmm. If I get comfortable yeah. in them myself and I just think I can steamroll people yeah, to the you side. Should, you should be letting go sometimes because like, yeah. it, it does take, I think it's inefficient to hold on sometimes. It really is. Well, I've, I've made a career out of holding on to people and making them suffer and not going to the straps. Mm. But like when I pulled Ben. Do you think you could hold on to me? Well, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Do you think you could hold on to me out of straps? If I was just all in going for the slip. Well, if you're committed to letting go and you're really rotating and balling up, if you're trying to arm wrestle me and top roll through me, absolutely not. If you're going to actually try to post up and top roll through me, yep. um, no. If you get to the point where you don't like what you feel and you fully ball up and pull away, kind of like how Brandon did it, but maybe with a little more experience and snap, I think I would just get myself in more trouble than it's worth. So the question, I guess, the answer to that is like, if you try to arm wrestle yeah, and okay. actually physically break my hand and wrist, no. Yeah. If you try to, remember, look, if you really try to slip, that. yeah, you could slip. I think it was 2019 when I uh, had the privilege of hanging out with John, and and he had this barbecue that went all day, and we had we had 30 odd arm wrestlers there or something. It was after the tournament. Um, I was staying with John, and John said to me, "There's no way you could slip me, Ryan. Even if you, even if you." You give it everything. There's no way you could slip me. And that was the running bet that we had on the weekend. And um, it turns out it was true until John had had three beers. Once John had had three <laughs> beers, I could believe it. <laughs> Don't underestimate it, man. Maybe the guy who pulled an arm guard just 50% because I had at least 100 beers in a compressed amount of time. <laughs> oh, man, it was crazy. I've pulled James Wall on left. And look, the dude is a stud. I actually I actually really like James. I think James is one of those guys that that is way better than the average opinion 
amongst the noisy fans of the sport uh, really understands. I think I think he's I think he's got real strength, and I think he'll he'll become uh, one of the genuine top top guys very soon. Yeah. So no, you're not going to slip from me. Um, but uh, I'm also so what I was going to say is how I approach a match lately. I take a very cerebral approach, kind of like they do in MMA. If a guy is a really good striker and he's going against a guy who's a really good wrestler, he probably seeks out a really good world-class wrestler to train with and um, tries to tighten up that game, being aware of it and comfortable with it, but still keeps up on the striking game so he can kind of dictate that. So if I go against a guy like I knew Ben, he had a game plan to get me in a hook, get me arm to arm, get me dogged in there, get me in the straps. And I tried to hang on the first match, but it's a little different when somebody's really tall and they just sit down and push down in the middle, like kind of Jerry Cataret. Then you get kind mm-hmm. of like, but it wasn't like pushing through to the side. It was like straight down and use that as the slip in the middle of the table. Yeah, After that, yeah. I just said, fuck it, put some straps every round. If you're going to be that committed to not arm wrestling me and slipping, I'll give it to you because I recognize these things that people might take lanes on me. And I train for the worst case scenario. Worst case scenario with this guy is, he gets me in the straps, he gets carved in on me, and he gets me in the hook. And we did that. You know, same with James. Worst case scenario is I end up out here on my bicep while he's feeling as good as he's ever felt and dragging on me with a nine-inch pad. Played the game. So it's not like I want to go there, but I'm very ready for it. And with you, I know I'd have to be very ready for whatever horse hockey you're going to play in them straps. Because <laughs> I don't believe no matter how much you arse and curl, I don't believe none of that because I'm not going to go live in a cave you're not going to hook me because it's going to be so fucking retarded. I, I, I think I could hook you. I, I like it's No, not, you like... could hook me and follow me down to the pad and then we'll go get some beers. <laughs> you're just not going to be competitive in that lane. I, uh, the, the, the shape that I hook you is like, like I, 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 I'm honestly a, I, I'm a constantly derail kind of guy. And what I mean by that is I, I, I very rarely, and especially with someone like you, I'm not just going to get into a hard counter battle. I'm not going to go, all right, here, here's the here's the force. Let's go straight at each other. I'm going to constantly be at 90 degrees, or attempt to be at 90 degrees. To, well, you're going to be safety hooking. Where if I start going this way, you're going to well, then I'll top roll again. Yeah, as you're going to move. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I know what I'm dealing with here, and I'm I'm, I'm working on that. As it is right now, I I've got I got shit planned for you, son. Just you don't, don't you get know. just don't get your shit too stretched out and broken because I got a nasty little shoulder press on me too. So. I, you know, I don't want this podcast to be all fucked up because, you know, you caught an injury. <laughs> you know, when when we had a match booked a couple of years ago, remember, because we actually had a match booked. We had a yep. King of the Table match booked. Dev, Devin told me, Devin, I was chatting with Devin about what strategy to use against you. And he said, Rob is terrible against King's movies. That's what, that's what he, that was his advice to me at the time. Oh, he's trying to get you hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I've never lost to a King's move. And I've pulled a bunch of guys, super heavyweights and everything. I never lost to it. Yep. That's where I become a joint puller, where I throw it in there. So I would, he must not like you. That's crazy. I mean, <laughs> I mean all I got to do is say like this. There's only one way to find out. Just drop it in there, man. But yeah, I'll, I'll go there. You know, you know, against Ron, it was the first time I've been there at, at, at what I would call a high tension. Like, obviously, that was red line tension. Uh, I train with Lachlan, but I'm a bit... Ron has a way longer forearm than than Lachlan, and so it was different. It, it, I the elbow fouls that happened, they they weren't deliberate. They were. I was trying my desperate best to stay on the pad because I believed I could win if I could stay on the pad. But Ron's length of arm and side pressure and jamming nature was it just. And th- these were longer pads too, and I still couldn't stay on. Yeah, well, you that's because you ran so far out. back. You, you were far out. forward. I mean, let's call it what it is. If you were far forward, you would have got fucked up. You only went that far back because you had to. No, I and wish that I stayed with the original group, which was the deep top roll group where I did stay forward. That was that group worked. I tried round one, I was deep, but a low hand top roll. Round two, I went knuckles up hook. And round three, I went shallow grip top roll. I should have just gone three deep grip top rolls. But anyway, that's that's how you learn. Yeah, it's good. I mean, you should have had that match then. If it popped off, it might have voted well. But right now, where I'm going, I'm motivated. I was up last night at like midnight thinking about why my lifts are down. Of course, I just had a match and, you know, I probably need a longer recuperation, but my lifts are off a little bit and it's getting in my brain. First thing I do is wake up and come down here and fuck around a little bit for this podcast. There's going to be too much of like 
like that rabbit's gonna be a little too much for too quick for that greyhound you know mm -hmm. so you might make great ground in the chase but you're not gonna beat me until i decide to like fall off and retire or something i think oh well i lose falling forward that's what that's what i like to say i keep um, there you go forward. <laughs> well, I actually do have a habit of losing and then taking on my next match being a more significant opponent. Like the amount of times that that's happened, it's, it's yeah. Just don't just yeah. Just get back on the winning side again. You know what I mean? The internet's cruel. They're gonna have your ass go, going into a fucking living in a cave, and they're gonna put a rock on the top so you can't come out. And you know this sport, you gotta catch some W's. Doesn't matter. It's Rob Bow. It's an L. They're terrible. <laughs> Hey, Rob, we've been on for an hour and 16, and guys, just want to let you guys know we will be maybe 15 minutes more, so if you have any burning questions, shoot them through. But to yeah, end this one, them. to end this one, whilst everyone's asking the questions, I'm going to go through, and I just want you pretty much to give me quick answers on yep. uh, who's going to win these matches. We're going to go through the East first, West 12, East first West 12 lineup. Uh, let's start it. Where's the first match? we got Samusha up against... Adakin. Adakin. <laughs> uh, I got to go Samusha at this point. I mean, his his uh, record is his record. Yep. Okay, so that's a, Adakin is a, is a Kazakh coming through. Um, it's it's a right-arm world title. Of course, yeah, Samusha's done five defenses or whatever. I, I have to I have to go with you and agree with that one. Tarasitis versus Makarov. Tarasitis. He's a little little surgeon, isn't he? The way that he just yeah, and, and actually, I don't know if Makarov's like the guy that we remember from a few years back. He looked mm -hmm. a little bit uh, like aged and thinned out a little bit when he pulled uh, Adam Borzinski. He looked a little bit off. He's one of the most obscure. I, I, I like obscure ratios in in the sport when it comes to arm length, hand size. He's got a really compact setup with a super thick bicep. Super thick hand. It's 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 different. It looks real different. I, I I'm a yeah, fan he's, of what he's, he's, he's big for his size. He's got a different look. Uh, but he looked a little bit. It's almost like Krazy in like the early like like two thousands compared to Krazy now. Like it's just a different thickness and stuff and different build. He didn't look like he did that I remembered Makarov. But Tarasitis is a is a master at keeping the game where he wants to. So right now I'm going with Tarasitis. Okay. Okay. Hey, by the way, Paul Lynn is in the chat. People are asking about you and Paul Lynn. Uh, let's I want to throw that one out there as well. You you guys would have faced in the in the WAL, says Paul, had it have continued. Um, do you guys do you see yourself having a match with Paul at some stage? Um, I mean, arm wrestling is like a, a one-lane highway, and we're all like merging on at different points. And at some point in time, when you're both merging at the same time because you're going the same place. Someone's going to fall back and someone's going to move ahead. That's what a match is. You meet at that intersection, you have a match, you get the right of way, the other guy falls back in line because we're all trying to get to that end destination. But me and Paul have had the conversation many a times. There's so much out there for us both to do that as friendly people, people that enjoy each other, um, that would almost be like a last resort match for me, even though there'd be curiosity around it. Because yep. I don't like... Uh, there's plenty for us to do before we even consider that. And the same thing with Ron. People are like, would you want to pull Ron? Dude, Ron is like, I don't get starstruck by people. I'm not a big movie star fucker. I'm not a, I don't get weird about sports figures. But man, I used to stay up at night and watch Ron Bath's videos on loop when I first started to the point where I was like obsessing over the guy. Then when I met him in person, I was a little bit like, you know, a little weird. And even still going to breakfast and talking to him and shit 20 years later feels a little weird. And whether... I could beat him or not. I would never want to be the one to do that to him. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Hey, so, tell me about. Yeah, it, it's probably an interesting match for people, but I think it'd be way too much to do in the world of arm wrestling before we got to worry about that. Yeah. yeah. Look, if, if you get on, you get on, if you if you get back on that the, the train in terms of being obviously noticed within the top ten in the world at one hundred five kilos, you guys will eventually run into each other. So, um, but yeah, it's not something that you're going to go hunting. I guess. Don't have to be I for guess. that cheddar though. So we both walk away fat and happy and go to Club Med like this, beating the system. You know what I mean? I do. Tell me about Sasha Andreev and Arakli Zarakashvili. Who's taking that one? You have firsthand experience with Sasha. Um, Arakli seems like he's in stud form right now. Um, yeah, there's two problems with yeah. that. Um, I don't have uh, enough. Like, I can't say enough about Sasha because I pulled Sasha textbook wrong and in, in, in a horrible 
mental and physical space. Um, but when you see Sasho, he victimizes people who try to top roll him, especially in the straps. And I still think that he's going to have a superior comfort in arm um, that it may look exactly like the first time they met, even though the Iraq might have leveled up to some degree. It's not a huge level up. And I think he's going to eventually get caught in that spot. That's going to be Sasha's wheelhouse. And they're so contrasting. I do think Sasha, uh, that Arakli falls off if he can't talk roll you. I think there are guys that might not be as strong as some of the guys that Arakli beats, but they might be more complete in other ways that throw him for a tailspin. I mean, look at Anger Baya was able to keep that hand flat and cracked. And mm -hmm. he made short work of Arakli. Not short work. They were competitive matches, but he did beat him. I think the the match where they pulled they were ninety it was ninety kilos. It was back in two thousand and maybe two thousand twenty or something like that. Sasha, I think it would Rackley took one round and then Sasha felt the lane and and, and was able to put the block. Yeah. On. Because I, I don't think that Arakley's gonna close that gap. He's not thinking like me. One thing you see with European pullers is it's almost like it, it, and it's a lot with with the US guys. The the real guys that really rise to the cream have more than just their main weapon. They have a sidearm with them. They have a fucking knife. They can fall on other things if they have to. You know, I'll go back real quick to my match with James. I had a plan. It failed. So I said, step the hook, but that was good enough. Um, a lot of these guys, it, when you watch like Zolev pull Todd Hutchings, he did the same thing over and over, losing the same way the first time they met. And it was like the same soup warmed over. They just think that I'm going to try the same thing, but harder. And I see Arakli having so much success in doing what he's doing. That you're not going to see him just shoot a hook with Sasho. He's already like mm -hmm. mind block, body yeah. block, lane block. He's not a guy that's going to be like John Brzezink who will try to top roll, fail. Then the next round, he's fucking throwing yeah. a shoulder at you. Yeah, it, it takes it takes a, a big degree of courage, but it, it's it's always the right decision. When 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 if Sasho just believes that you're just going to top roll, it's easy for him. But yeah, you shoot across super with with and put your elbow on the line and actually go go yeah, brave it, at it. 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 If you you roll somebody like you hook them through their palm where you get them really supinated up, yeah. like you hook them through their thumb. That's something yeah. I'm playing with now, which I think that's part of what popped James's arm was yep. the second round or third round when when we hooked. I really like went into it into his palm and just when I dragged it, it kind of hyper supinates and puts you out here on the joint. Um, but yeah, I think that versatility. I don't think he's going to close the gap no matter how good his top roll is, no matter how. Crazy so as gym even, numbers are, no matter how much he curls 300 kilos for 12 reps and all that bullshit I see with their fucking weights and their fucking implications, I don't think it's going to change anything. You love those. You it's love dog the Georgian, shit. The it's dog shit. They can give away fucking apartments in Georgia, but you can't get a respectable set of Olympic fucking weights so we can see what they're doing. Look, I got all these random mismatched weights over there. I'm going to put a video up right now of me bicep curling 220 kilograms, one arm. No problem. <laughs> Just believe me. That's all you got to do is believe me, you Brad Castleberry believing motherfuckers. <laughs> it's getting spicy. Hey, tell me about Georgie Svetkov and Alex Kadecha, two two guys that are in their own claim sort of untop rollable. Who's going to lose their wrist? Uh, I think Alex will because Georgie's the guy who seems like he comes more forward. I think I think they'll both have similar tops. But I think Georgie's the guy who's more comfortable. A guy like Alex it seems to be more comfortable hanging back and getting that lane. He doesn't seem like a guy comes forward as much. And I think mm -hmm. if it freezes, Georgie's going to have a better shoulder line to kind of push on him a little bit. Alex is genuinely the – genuinely the. I, th I think he's the biggest frame out of everyone in there. He may not be the heaviest, but I think the width of that man's shoulders, the the the, the length of his arm, the size of his hand, I think he's the genuine biggest guy in arm wrestling. And he uses that incredibly. Alex Kadecha. Alex oh, Kibitcha. yeah, I thought you were saying Georgie. I was like, have you seen Alex? <laughs> no, Holy yeah. shit, that, that is a yeah. big, like, like a, and, like just a big frame of a man. Yeah, and I remember when Ermis Gasparini lost to Kadecha, and I don't know whether Ermis was in bad form or not, but but Kadecha popped Ermis' wrist very comfortably that night. I remember thinking, wow, okay. At the time, everyone was like, Kadecha's going to be the dude to beat Levine after he did that. But – I don't know. I'm, I'm back in. I'm, I agree with you that I feel like Georgie is the better arm wrestler in terms of coming forward, coming sideways. He's got more stickiness in that. So I feel like Alex's arm is still susceptible to it being opened up on his bicep. Yeah, I think um, that's how it's going to go. I think they're going to try to top roll. It'll be in the straps. I think Alex will get it kind of flat, but he'll be like hanging back on the pad. And then Georgie will kind of be tall there and eventually just like side pressure it across while it fades away. Yeah, I got you with that one here. as well. I agree. Hey, uh, 
Fia Rysek and uh, Nikasheva. I haven't seen Nikasheva competing in some time, but good to see those two. Who you got? Yeah, that's that's hard to say because I know that uh, Nikasheva has a ton of world championships. But I mean, mm-hmm. the truth of the matter is, is it's very hard to root to, to bet against Fia. She just seems everything she does, she slays it. So I mean, um, until proven otherwise, I don't I don't have enough. Uh, data to say anything other than i don't think it'll be easy uh, there might be some sticky spots but she just looks so dominant sandra Sadis and uh sagov sagov who last time i think i saw sagov pull was against todd hutchins i think todd pulled through him but it it looks I sticky think, i think yeah he's a real tall shoulder roller right um yeah. i think i think uh sandris is a guy like we talk about with a lot of things in the toolbox he can try the hook he can press he could top roll and um uh, I mean, I could see him getting blasted if he gets caught deep into that shoulder roll, but I think he's a seasoned enough. Pro- he, Sanders is a professional. He's a professional mm-hmm. arm wrestler, and I'm not saying the other guy's not. I'm just based on the toolbox and his success at that weight class. I think uh, Sanders can pull it out. It may be ugly. It may go all the rounds, but I think Sanders can do it. He's got That's too much of a good team around him, too many big yeah. brains around him that aren't going to be prepared yeah. for that. I think we, we spoke about it when we were in Ireland. We talked about the, the, the culture of each nation's arm wrestlers. Like they, they, everyone, everyone tries to work out what the best way to arm wrestle is, but, but each country has kind of gone with its own flavor. And the flavor of the Latvians is, is they're very scientific. They're very technical. They, they, they train very diligently and they, they take a, they take a, a, a real, as you said, big brain approach to arm wrestling. And, and Sanders fits that mold. So uh, I, I feel like Sanders will win it for me in a grind. Yeah, through, yeah, I think through, so too. Michael Todd and Lamparelli, Frank Lamparelli. The comeback. I think that's Michael going to be a Todd. test for Michael coming back. Um, you know, Lamparelli's. I think Lamparelli's got a great top roll. I just don't think he's going to have the raw strength that will take to finish Michael. I think he'll get yeah. Michael in that position, like old school Michael, where he might have to fall back onto that position a little bit. Uh, but I think Michael's just going to be too body strong. I think. Even if it goes a little bit, I think it's gonna be too body strong. Yeah. What do you what do you think about Michael's lifts? Have you oh seen man, him? like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. The thing is, you can't be critical because he's he's Michael and he he, he gets results on the table. So you. I like, mean, I think everybody. If you take a hundred arm wrestlers, you see you see everybody doing some crazy shit. You don't know how much of it's real lift or how much of it's for uh, content. So, you know, he could create an implication because implications are great. Well, this guy did 60 kilograms. I'm going to do 61 and it's great. How much of it's real, how much of it translates, you know, um, I get caught up in it sometimes too, no doubt about it. But, um, you know, Michael's a a different guy. I've seen Michael do sets of uh, 150 and then now I see him doing, you know, crazy weird one rep maxes. So we're going to see where it translates on the table. I mean, I don't know. Some of it's crazy. Some of it's cool. I know I click on it. He's got a, his channel's leveled up since I think Rebecca started like really bumping that shit up. I mean, yeah. some of his shit's formatted pretty good. One thing you can't take away from Michael and Rebecca is that they are relentless. They don't give up. They take the losses when they come, be it on the table or in the social media world. They, they evolve and they learn. So, yeah, I, I there's think a, there's a nod for Uncle John. Uncle John, man, you think you're getting on this phone and you want to hide off from the fucking internet. Man, there's three <laughs> people right there that have taken every bit as much shade as you. Michael Todd, Ryan Bowen, and me so you got in it we're talking about you you, you can't even take top fucking three and people that have taken shade so michael todd i'll tell you what with some of the shade he's gotten that's some severe uh resiliency to still be on youtube and push it yeah leonidas arcona and schoolboy is it left or right it's right right this might surprise you but i think leonidas might pull that out in the straps why because i think at some point in time the way schoolboy hook uh, top rolls he's susceptible to the hook he like full hand top rolls people so he kind of like bows and rows first and i think that leonidas might get stuck there on that bicep and from what i've seen it's pretty sticky and over the rounds and he's pretty enduring it's not just sticky i think he's enduring if you're a schoolboy in this one are you going in with the high hook or going in all out top roll uh hi me i would go in Mm. with the high hook and but but with uh, the right shoulder commitment, not like falling out here on the hook, falling here. So if you got to turn the shoulder down on it and manipulate mm-hmm. it that way, 
I think if you start getting separated from your shoulder on like your brachioradialis or something, how you see so many top rollers dominate from 10 to 2, but then they walk mm -hmm. away from their arm. They don't have their hips high. That's something I've been training too. Not falling away from the top roll, kind of hips high with the shoulder creating that pressure. So then if it gets surged, you're up here. If he keeps a high shoulder and presses and uses that big frame, he can do it. But he's got to be careful because there is a sticky spot to that fucking guy that I've noticed. It's easy to hate. Like, I want to hate on certain people. But, I mean, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I didn't give the devil his dues. So I think he probably has some very strong spots. Th those muscles can't be all fake. What do you think? He's back at SpongeBob oh, yeah. over there blowing well, him up? I, I, think, I think it was pretty clear when we saw Leonidas defeat Larry that he was he was very strong. I, I, I've pulled Larry. I know what I know what it feels like to pull with, to train with Larry, to compete against Larry. And Larry feels really, really fundamentally strong. And Leonidas just was was 20 percent stronger like he just did everything larry did but and you, yeah you see him at the after pulls at all the east first west getting his uh yeah. you know getting yes. his after pulling in and you see him really you know he looks very strong and i think in the straps the way schoolboy pulls he might get caught now it could be flash pins it could be full rotation super nation straight down i won't be shocked if schoolboy three owes him but i won't be shocked to see him get stuck and leonidas win that either that's kind of like very finicky depending on how that falls I, I'm really interested in that one because I, I was in the room when Schoolboy lost to Khaled, and then I cleaned up the scraps, as we know. But um, Schoolboy against Khaled, for me, when he came up against some man that had a, a large hand with significant wrist flexion, he made the wrong choice back then. He he do, he went straight into the hook, and he didn't he didn't high hook, he didn't top roll. He really di didn't trust his own ability to transition from back pressure with pronation to a hook. I I I think he really needs to. Have, change that if he if he goes in with the same thing and if he dives straight into a hook i think he'll lose i think if he goes all out top roll i think he loses as well i think he has to high hook and transition yeah nicely. it has to be it has to be somewhere in the middle it, it, top roll you're gonna fight on the straps uh hook you're gonna be too deep into a short frames arm but if he if he uses that flexion and rotation yeah. yeah, I agree. Hey, Steve, Steve Legree, thank you very much. Super Chat, four ninety nine US dollars. Awesome show, guys. I hope you guys keep it going. Thank you very much, Steve Legree. Yeah, man, we're going to keep it going for sure. Hey, um, we've got a few more matches, then we'll wrap it up, Rob. Um, yep. Tobias Sparong and Camille Jablonski, left arm. You know, Camille had oh, such I an impressive this, week. Camille had such an impressive match the, uh, to, when he beat Devin and then he beat Cody. So how could mm. anyone vote against him? My problem is, is Tobias is another really, really big framed, very similar like size and frame to like Camille. And he just looks so fast and so side pressure that I feel he's just going to sweep that match before anything can be sunk. I feel he's going to take control. The easiest way to beat a flopper is by wrist flex, turn him palm up. They want that lane. If you turn him like this, they lose that lane. Now they're out here. So I think that Tobias has a lot of confidence in his hand and wrist, and he just looks so proficient with like a little sideways pop and speed. I'm going with Tobias. Yeah, I'm going with Tobias as well, based on his performance at King of the Table I, I, against uh, Wagner Bordelato. He looked so savage at center. He's he, he was not afraid of of. I mean, Wagner's not Camille when it comes to flopping, but when Wagner was looking to flop, it was like it was an easy easy day. For, for, yeah. for Tobias. It was so simple for him to just crowd center and just say, oh, savage side pressure, can you deal with it? Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think I think Camille's going to struggle to actually set the flop on this one. Um, I think Tobias... I think even if he sets really the flop, sharp. he might get himself hurt. Yeah, because Tobias is really sharp in, in sensing where the center balance is. And he'll supernate, pronate, supernate, pronate, block you perfectly. He's not afraid to crowd with his own shoulder. And his, his version of side pressure is like... There's no, there's no looseness to it. He doesn't leave his shoulder out here. It's, it's, it's almost press like himself. It's like this pseudo top roll, pseudo press. That it's one movement where he just bangs sideways, really, really brutally. I think, right. I think it's gonna. Right. I feel like it's gonna be. If if Tobias Tobias wins, they're gonna almost be flashes. I think. Right. I I think uh, yeah, that's my dude. I think he's gonna win that. Look, if Camille wins this, then Camille's Camille's really. The real deal is yeah. if you win because this is stylistically a bad match for Camille. Yeah. Yeah. I think All I right. think I think Camille might have better luck with uh somebody who's not as fast in side pressure like Vitaly. He might have better yeah. luck, but yeah. a guy who hits yeah, with 
Vitaly's more like up and back a little bit, and he might he's susceptible to that flop more. And 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 Vitaly may be a guy that's better than Tobias, but stylistically, I think it's a really bad match for Camille. Yep, I agree. Hey, two more matches: Ermis Gasparini against Alizan Muratov, left arm super heavyweight world title. Is that a world title? Uh, Alizan. No, it's not the that's world just title. That's because but it... he's been so dominant, and uh, yeah. you know. I, I can't, I can't go against the guy who showed such proficiency. Yeah, he toyed with Prudnik. Um, his center table strength was way too much that he could then he could then do anything he wanted with Prudnik on the left. Um, Erm Ermes is a super heavyweight. Yeah, he's not a left arm specialist, but he is he is proficient on that arm. Um, that said, I, my gut feel is is that Alazan's going to do it. To be honest, yeah. Yeah, and it's not like it's gonna come. I mean, those guys, their training, their their proficiency, they're they they embody everything professional about arm wrestling. So, I mean, yeah, until proven otherwise, that's the dude. Okay, and then the 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 match that everyone's probably waiting to hear about, the one that everyone's talking about, the one that we'll all be tuning in for, uh, Devin and Levan. <laughs> Where are you at with that, man? Because, like, you know, I, I'll be honest, my opinion has changed many times on this i am still yeah me too unsure. i'm still unsure yeah i think there's a strong possibility we see devin's lifts going up and everything but the problem is is as soon as there's a change in any of those angles any direction the lift he's doing for the 160 pounds or whatever it is is going to be nullified it's a different lift a different hold now and when you look at the angle of the arm that Devin would have to get to to make that effective it might already be a full cup full of on. So now 160 pounds isn't on someone's fingers. It's now deep into their palm. Do I think that Devin can secure that that lane out on his hand before Levon can sweep and get him fully cupped under? Um, at times, I sit there and say, I think he'll get it done over the six rounds. But then part of me just thinks that uh, Levon is too physically complete. And, you know, when you have a one lane, and another guy, you know, it's it's just a dominating lane. I'm thinking that, you know, as we all know, if it stops, it's Devin's game. But is I'm it? Like, I'm, I'm thinking Levon's going to do it. Is it? Is it? Is it like? Are, are there? I think there are positions where if it stops, it's Levon's game still. Like if 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 Levon doesn't panic, if Levon if Levon because I've seen like Georgie Svetkov against Devin, for instance, where Georgie almost got through. It was right. Devin's rise. Devin's rise was was like on the edge of giving up. Yeah, and and, and I think that Levon. I mean, without stating the obvious, because he's heavier than Georgie, but I think his like he seems to at least in the the he looks like he's taller and longer. You know what I mean? So for Devin to rise over that is you know that even if that extra half inch or inch is going to be harder, um, and it's just a bigger human and a stronger human in all areas. I think if Levon doesn't panic. Even if the match stops, and he's 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 prepared for that match, because I've seen Levon in grinders in the past, but that's when he was like lighter. So that's he tough. knows how to grind. It's just a matter of is he going to? Um, I I could see it being very dominant for Levon, but there's also it's not like a hundred percent. There is that like ten percent, you know, like on the pie chart that if he falls here or Devin executes perfectly, it could change mm -hmm. the tides. But right now I'm calling it like a ninety percent. I think Levon can sweep it. If Levon does Levon, he can sweep it. Okay, ninety percent. That, that's that's confident. I'm not that confident. And, I, and like I, I, I see. I'm saying it's. I'm, I'm saying like it's Levon's to definitely lose at this point. I mean, yeah, I, 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 and I predicted. I think that Devin's going to win it. But I go back and forth because fundamentally, man, just just one strong lane. You could have all these other faculties think about travis page in his day people are like oh if i could just get him in a hook if i could just press him but he was so <laughs> proficient in his lane that just people couldn't do it and i think levon's like rolling over people and able to that by the time you might even sink a lane you can pull 200 pounds up on your riser if you're already out here and you've got this guy fully cupped over you your 200 pound riser now needs to be a 400 pound riser you know what i mean it's like yeah. mechanically you're at such a disadvantage what what about the thought like if you're for me levon has to be careful uh, if Levan revs the engines real hard and goes for the pin and misses, it's big. It's big trouble. It's big trouble oh, yeah. for his hand. But if Levan, if if, if Levan just stayed at center 
and and didn't rev the edges, rev the engines, but but said, "You pin me, Devon, round one." I, I don't think Devon can pin Levan if if that happens. Which which is the more which is the bigger risk for Levan to rev the engines and go for it, and, but and and crash against the rocks of Devon's pronation when they're fresh. Or is it a bigger risk for him to relax and say, Devin, try to pin me and let, and and go for letting Devin's pronation actually gas? No, I don't think you want to let a guy like Devin start falling even into that King's move and really maximizing that height and rotation. I think you're going to want to beat Devin through a sweep. You know, a lot of hand control and get him palmed up because if you see everything that Devin's training, it's kind of like forward of shoulder, you know, rise pronation. You turn him up here a little bit, it's kind of how I predicted that um, Daddy Khan would beat Todd Hutchings. Todd Hutchings has all these strong angles, but he's not elite on the bicep. Very strong bicep. Let's not get it crazy. But I figured Daddy Khan's wrist would turn it into almost like a drag war, which Todd's more comfortable like triangulating and pushing and making victims out of top rollers, where he lets his hand go flat and then push on the strap. Now he gets somebody which where Rustam used to put him, which would turn him in the bicep a little bit, and then it becomes mm -hmm. a drag war. And his bicep is very strong by any standards. It's just not that, like, top 10 elite strong with guys who are comfortable there. And I think that if Levon's hand is strong enough on a pop to turn Devin here somewhere and not too tight into his shoulder so he can body block and kind of, like, drags him out a little bit outside his shoulder, it could be a very fast match. I feel like Levon is going to be too scared to go that lane. I feel like he. I feel like Devin's static pressure is going to be sufficient to – Dictate is there going to be static in the center line, or is there going to be a lot of ground before it hits? I think there'll be and ground. I, there'll be I'll ground. Tell you but... what, I learned a lot about my own injury and how I could change the tides of the match by hogging this right here and being immovable. Because I used to fall out here a lot and do that stuff. And when you give people that room to run, you're allowing them to dictate what you're doing. When you can dictate that center with just a little bit of everything, now other people who train, that's why I don't really like the Devin Larratt lift is because it is training you to be comfortable open here. But look at how much movement you've got to make in time before you get to what you need. Whereas some other fucker who's like iron right here, mm -hmm. by the time that half second comes, you might already be cupped under. Yeah. You know, those little half a seconds really change the tides. I don't disagree. I don't disagree, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Different question, different line of thinking. Does Levan have a flop press? When I when I look, I know that Devon's left is not Devon's right, but look at how easy Jim, uh, Camille Jablonski went through Devon on left. Um, I know that Levan is not a, a flop presser, but he's never had to. I, I I I've seen one one match where he where he finished with a press, but it, it was a bone line press. It wasn't flop. Do you think? Yeah, all I'm saying to, is that would be a tragedy to be a 400 plus pound man. <laughs> and, and you don't have a fucking flop pressed. You walk around with that kind of mass on you and you're at whatever height and you can't stand up and push at somebody, just go fucking leave the auditorium, walk to the nearest bridge and swan dive right <laughs> off it. Don't even care if there's water. It could be train well, tracks, could be rocks, whatever. If you're a 400-pound man and you can't stand up and throw your shoulder at somebody, just, if there's no bridge, climb to the top floor of the nearest building and launch yourself right the fuck off. Because if you're that big and you can't do things on a strength level like pushing on someone, then fuck off. You know what I mean? Okay. That's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> you need to be you need to be his corner man for when it's silver bullet and his hand is gassed. And he needs to no, because that... then I go to jail for telling the guy to kill himself or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, don't God forbid you're a grown up who says your own thoughts like, no, I want to live. I got stuff to live for. That I'm the maestro, like the Pied Piper, and I walked you off the fucking bridge. I mean, come on, no. I won't be his corner man. I'd be Devin's corner man. And I'm going to say, look at this giant pussy. He can't even push. But if he has a press, he's in good shape. He should. Yeah. He should He should have a press. I, look, look, I think that the shape of this match, it's as you said, it's Levan's to dictate. I think I think you want, one of the reasons why I feel so uncertain about this is how Levan performed against Hermes. Uh, there, there was big concern there for me. I think that had the referees actually made a slightly different call, Hermes wins a round before Levan got to four. I think that there was a round there where they could have said running fouls, where Levan was overpronated and his bicep was exposed and, and Hermes with his wrist back and his shoulder in was actually starting to chip through. So I, I'm concerned. Yeah, that, but to, that, be, to be fair, um, I don't think 
just because Devin beat Ermes, I don't think Devin has the push game that from that angle with a flop that Ermes yeah. does. Well, I, I agree Ermes with you on got that. that new that newly acquired mass, and he, he seems to be body strong and pushing open like that and through is is I don't think that he would be able to stop Levon from yeah. there. No, but it's the Kings move. It's, it's a stylistic matchup. Yeah, but the Kings move. Will it get to? I guess it all depends on how much it hand could. control. I, I think I think Devin might be comfortable losing one or two as long as he can get that hand to soften and flat. And so by the time it gets to three, maybe. And that's where I'm giving that ten percent. Is what's going to happen first? Is he going to soften everything before the match is decided? Is it all going to be softened, or is it going to be a little bit too much too late? You know. You know, one thing I will share, um, and I think it's okay to share. And this share is the this. last time we're talking about this fucking match because I can't open YouTube without being strangulated with Levon <laughs> and Devin. I feel like there's nobody even arm wrestles anymore. Much love to Devin. Don't know you, Levon. You fucking annoy me with your giant hugeness. But goddamn, guys, there's got to be tens of thousands of arm wrestles in this world. I and I don't even feel like any of you guys fuckers exist. I hope that someday, I, I feel like it might happen about five years, ten years from now, where we've got five to ten guys that have the current or have an equivalent to the current fan base size that Devin has. Because at the moment, if when Devin's on a on a pay-per-view, it's successful. We'll take Devin off a pay-per-view, it drops 50, 60% or something like that. So Yeah, you got to think, though, yeah. Devin put in that work. Devin A was in, like, the very beginning years of YouTube. Very beginning. Like, he's been on YouTube a long time. And then he started cultivating it as it started growing. Then he had tours in, like, India, Japan, China, yeah. I think at one time he didn't go home for like a couple months. He was yeah, all yeah. over the world I, laying that groundwork cool. in the most yeah. populated countries in the world. And then he had the opportunity where he did the mountain thing and he was on David Letterman or uh, some, not David Letterman, one of those other shows where he had Shaq and did all that shit. So, I mean, his exposure, but it's been cultivated over a long time. But he also did a lot of sacrifice traveling the world so much before he actually broke that level. But yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. But by hey, then, we're going to be old fuckers, and no one's going to want to get behind old fuckers. It's the new crowd that people want to get behind. <laughs> hey, Bert Drake, thank you very much for the $5 Super Chat. Congrats on the best new arm wrestling podcast in the world. All the best, gents. Thank you very much, Bert Drake. I appreciate it. Hey, Rob, before we go, the, what I did want to say about the, the Devin match that I was going to share that is oh, – sorry, I keep on bringing up comments. It, it, this thing is one factor that is like – this is the – this is the ace up the sleeve factor. This is the kind of left field factor that that not a lot of people get the privilege of knowing. But um, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of time talking with John Milne in, in recent weeks. John Milne has been very supportive of me, helped me prepare for Ron and all that sort of stuff. And John oh, Milne. Good job. Yeah. John good Milne. Job, John Milne. <laughs> yeah, we lost. That's right. John Milne says to me, Devin's going to win this time. Like, and, and, and he's not saying that because he's a, he's a, he's his best mate. He's his buddy. But it, it, I, I'm reading that John is seeing something different in Devin. So that, that intimate knowledge is like, that to me is actually quite valuable. Oh, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that Devin's coming in different, but stylistically, it's kind of like Iraqli and Sasho where they hit each other's strengths and weaknesses. I don't, I don't think that, that Iraqli, if he takes the same lane, that his acquired strength is going to matter as soon as he falls into he's victimized by Sasho's lane, and I think he will be. Um, I absolutely see where Devin can win it and where he's stronger and better, but is his strength going to be enough to avoid Levan's dominating areas? I go back and forth over it. Trust me, I do. I see both sides. Like I'm not betting on this match. I'm not gonna go to. I'm not gonna take all my my winnings and go to bet on this match. I just think that right now, Levan's strengths trump Devin's strengths. You know, I think he's gonna be a better dictator of the of the of the game. Mm, there you go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the music's on. That means that uh, we're at the end of the show. What do we got? Some cool fucking. Uh, like oh, dance, right. like 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 lounge music, yeah. All right. What's the, hey, what's man, the lounge down, music? Whatever. You want to put whatever you it's want good. on there? That's cool. I made a gas station porn reference earlier, so we can get down however you want. <laughs> we can we can get down. We can get down. But ladies and gentlemen, look. Thank you very much. We've got 346 people in here, Rob, joining us for the first episode. 346 live concurrent. Oh, we slated, bro. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, I'll take those numbers. 
Very, 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 very happy. Very uh, impressed with the, the turnout. Thank you guys so much for the support. Yeah, What's thanks, the name guys. of the show again? Over, overcome and Overpower. Definitely. Oh, definitely wait. One super- thing. A lot of people have been asking about my your daily thoughts. My Real quick, my daily thoughts on your lift. I think yes. that Ryan could bastardize any lift to, 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 to make the numbers go up. I but, think bro, it's a bro. cool lift. I fuck with it sometimes. But I got better ways of doing it than apply to arm wrestling. I think he found a way to make daily shorts, which now I'm jealous of because now I have no content to make. But I'll be on this podcast. I think it's cool. Ryan will find a way to lift 80 kilograms if Ryan wants to. And I don't believe his plate either. He's just like them goddamn cheating fucking Georgians. And that's all I got to say about that. There's a lot of truth to that. Look, look, and given that we're this is the the pilot episode, uh, 346 of you guys here, I'll, I'll let you know that like that, that lift, that lift. The, the truth be told, the lift is not the most efficient lift. But I love the lift because it's cool and it looks weird and it gets clicks. I got to admit. Yeah, and every like, now like, and then you can do something oh, cool, well. like when you shoulder raise it or you snap it down yeah. and kind of like fuck well, you I in. Wait, wait, I mean, I, listen, I, I gotta my, my now go get my own lift that I do now because that's my, you know I feel like I'm not keeping pace in the me. content game. My wife went and bought me the most colorful pairs of shorts I could possibly do because it's, it helps the algorithm. I, I, I get these short shorts on, my, my stupid skinny legs stick out, and it, it becomes a laughing thing. But it, that what that's what makes it go. And, Bro, it's yeah. never not in my feed. Sometimes you're in my feed with that lift like six times with different days. I got to keep track of the day to make sure I didn't comment on that one already because I look like a goddamn stalker. Because then if I go in there and comment on it going, that's dog shit. And then I scroll through the comments. I see myself five days ago, like that's dog shit. So I'm like, come on, bro, fucking making me look like a stalker. Uh, anyway, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will be back uh, this time next week. We get, we have every intent of making this a regular thing. It's going to be a Saturday thing for us. Um, so we will see you this time next week. In uh, hey, Rob, same to you, man. Yeah, man. Best. It was good. Peace. All right, guys.